that have been published so far. In the psychosomatic, I mean? yes, I do. In the psychosomatic field, can you give an example of a, of a case uh, that that you've uh, treated? Oh well, yes. For instance, uh, yes, I can. Uh, uh. I believe you had an interesting case of psoriasis. Right, right, right. Can exactly. You, can, well, can that, you... yes, that was a patient. Uh, what was it? Well, it? Must have been about thirty or so. A, a lady, an English lady, and uh, she suffered. She was uh, at the dermatology clinic in Zurich uh, because she suffered from generalized uh, psoriasis and erythroderma, which in those days, this was about. Uh, must have been about 40 years ago, uh, which in those days without cortisone, etc., could easily be little. And the professor of dermatology didn't know what to do, and so he called me and he said, could you perhaps do something for the poor patient? And so I came and saw her once and, and, and asked her to pay attention to her dreams, if possible. Then I saw her the next day and she was completely cured. The erythroderma had disappeared. Only a few uh, local uh, sports. sports of psoriasis remained. And the professor didn't know what to make of it. And they all just shook their head. And, and, uh, so, and I asked her now, uh, how come? And she said, well, I've had this dream. I wrote it down, and that was the dream, it was very short. She had been uh, in the country somewhere, and suddenly, uh, walking, and suddenly, on the little footpath, uh, uh, a golden ball of the size of a, of a ping pong ball rolled along on the path. She followed it quietly. That was the dream. That coincided with the overnight cure. Which is very interesting. And, and this is an example of synchronicity. I would say so. I would say so. I wouldn't hesitate. I, I mean, at, at all events, you cannot claim of its being a causal connection, can you? Difficult, yes. No. So you think the synchronistic a coincidence, or I find the synchronistic phenomena occur in the psychosomatic field? Oh, absolutely, I'm sure of that. Yeah. What is your recollection of one of your most um, impressive cases that you've treated? <laughs> oh, uh, one case indeed uh, is still to the day to me, uh, extremely moving. That was in the early days at Burg at Hölzli, it must have been in 1930, uh, when I took over uh, the most uh, uh, disturbed ward of male patients, and my predecessor recommended me not to go near one patient who was standing like a statue in a corner there, because he, he, he was supposed to be dangerous, hit or whatnot. All right. So when I came to the ward next day, I, I, I looked at him more attentively, and, and I suddenly noticed that he was all right. He was perfectly stiff, but his eyes were anything but stiff. He was full of life. So I thought there was something should be done, and uh, approached him, uh, reached out my hand, and he immediately sh took it, shook it very heartily, and I took him along, said, come with me, and uh, took him out of the ward uh, uh, against heavy protest of the uh, nurse, and, uh, and took him to my, my home room and uh, asked him to sit down and to tell me what was bothering him, etc. Immediately started talking. 
fast, somewhat subdued, but fast, poured out a lot of material. And after an hour, I took him back. Next day, took him again to my room, and then uh, further days, I went, went to the park with him, walking, and he simply was uh, 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 pouring out, pouring out all the stuff. And after uh, two weeks, uh, after, after one week, we, he was on a, on a good ward, and after two further weeks, he could be discharged, dismissed. And uh, then in '39, there was a Swiss national exhibition in Zurich, town milling with people, and one Sunday, I also decided to go to downtown with my wife. And, uh, there's a limit, uh, somebody from across the street beckoned it, waved to me. At first, didn't understand why, and then uh, I realized it was this fellow, this patient. That was eight or nine years later. And he came all across the street. I was very, very friendly, very uh, happy, and uh, presented me with his bride, a nice little young girl, told me that he had been working ever since he was released from Bokhurtsley and uh, was very happy and made his living and was looking forward to getting married, etc., etc. Then he took his leave of absence and whispered into my ear, and isn't it striking, doctor? What good such a disease can do for you? So I thought this is now this is now a case uh, that could have happened at an Asclepi Aeon, where the, the, the where the uh, by the way I forget to, tell, to say this where the ex patient was regarded of being a religiosus. That was all that was required. <laughs> you, don't, you didn't even have to make an off, uh, offer or sacrifice or anything. The, the people there were sure that you were, you were transformed into a religiosus. Well, thank you very much indeed, Professor Meyer. The door.